Greetings and welcome to Family Worship Radio. I am your host, Lee Dodd. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is a wonderful day to begin a new study looking at the book of Proverbs, one of the most precious of our Old Testament books, one in 39, a book containing 31 chapters of wisdom that is Christ-centered and God-honoring, both promises and Proverbs. It will be a delightful study together, I assure you. I want to begin our look at Proverbs with a brief introductory study. I will read Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1, as our text for the day. In the ESV translation, it reads, The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. And I want to take just a few moments to look at King Solomon and who he was as the man God inspired to write most of what we have in the book of Proverbs. There are other contributors that we will encounter later in our study. But King Solomon, a man who the scriptures declare wrote thousands, literally thousands of Proverbs. Who is he? And why did God allow this man and inspire this man to write such Proverbs for our benefit today? Well, we likely know that King Solomon was the son of King David, mothered by Bathsheba. And King Solomon would be David's successor on the throne. He would reign in a time of peace and prosperity. He would actually be the final king to reign over the united Israel. In the days of Solomon's son, Rehoboam, the split occurs, and we then have the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. So Solomon reaps much of the fruit of his father's reign in godliness. He is much like his father. We see this clearly in 1 Kings chapter 3, and I'll read a portion of that here in a moment, verses 10 through 13, because Solomon, in humility, realized that to rule a nation was an impossible task. As the Apostle Paul says in the New Testament, who is sufficient For these things. Who can do this? And with humility, he describes himself as being like a child, helpless to go out or to come in. And he asks the Lord for one thing not riches, so no big bank account, not long life. I want to live till I'm 120. No, he asks the Lord for understanding, for wisdom, for insight. And in 1 Kings chapter 3, Starting in verse 10, the Lord responds to his request and says, It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. 1 Kings 3, 10-13 And this helps us to understand who it is that is writing these Proverbs, which have been preserved for us today. It is King Solomon the son of godly King David, the third king of Israel. We consider this as maybe the most wise man that has ever lived outside of Jesus Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. King Solomon, let me ask you, do you want to learn from someone who has been at it a year or a few months or a few weeks? Or do you want to glean wisdom and understanding from one who has been specially gifted by God and set apart like no other king that has ever been? Really, when we think of Solomon, we need to think of a man. A man, no doubt. But a man gifted by God with extraordinary wisdom 
and understanding. And we need to see that Solomon, inspired by God, with such mental ability, with such wisdom, can be a safe guide for us today. There is so much we can glean from the wisdom God gave to Solomon. And that is what we will attempt to do in this study of the book of Proverbs. In our next study, we will pick up in verses 2 through verse 7, and we will look at the reason why the book was written. Until then, God bless you, and continue to enjoy Family Worship Radio. 